two different directions. Normally you plant, the idea is that you plant uphill. So on this section, this is an up and over bank, isn't it, that just follows that line. So we've decided we'd plant this, uh, start to pleach this side and lay this side uphill and then reverse it the other way because as it goes back towards the road, then we want people to view the correct procedure on that side as well. So it, that's why we've decided to do two different ways. This is the completed hedge. A Midland Bullock style hedge would be um, three foot six to four foot, the finished height. That's the top of the, the top of the stakes there. And when, during competitions, they, um, they're looking for five different things to measure. They look for the, uh, the cut and pleach, the stake line, the binders, and the back of the hedge where John's standing now. The back of the hedge in this case is pretty lousy because we didn't have enough material to work with. So when we face up, we face up the front of the hedge, leave everything on the back, and the back of the hedge goes into the field where the cattle or the stock would be. Okay. And that's to protect the regrowth so that I think cattle are inquisitive, especially bullocks, they're inquisitive, aren't they? They will get amongst things and they will look for the, you know, the most luscious growth and they will find the way through and push the way through if they possibly can. And so this particular design is, is to prevent um, cattle getting through. This is a very low hedge, isn't it, because of the, the way it's been managed previously. It doesn't really matter, no cattle here. Um, but you can see the thickening at the base, so it might prevent sheep. It might be a sheep proof. We could use it for the sheepdog trials next Try it, year. Yes. <laughs> and these were favoured by a lot of uh, hedge layers, the older hedge layers. And in fact, that one was acquired from an old hedge layer. Uh, it, was, it was 70 odd years old. I forget his name now, but he worked in the shop in Shropshire area. And he didn't like this because he was a professional. He wasn't keen on that, uh, that particular tool because it lost its edge very really quick. So it's to do with the tempering, the making of the tool in the first place. But it's a nice big hook on it and a fairly short back. We've got Staffordshire style billooks as well. Um, which one are you using, Pen? Have you got one there? Oh, that's a, yeah, that's, that's a sort of small Staffordshire. Might, it, not even this it, Staffordshire. Sorry? This might be one. I'm not dissing it. You said it's a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a girl. Yeah, that's a girl. <laughs> and then the other one you've got there, what's that other style? They're, they're well over 70, perhaps even 100, I don't know. Okay. It works. Hazel has been coppiced from Highbury Park, one of the finest planted hazel uh, plantations really in, in Birmingham, I think. And so we've made good use of that by bringing it into, uh, into management and uh, we'll have a coppice rotation program going over the next few years. So it's a way of providing our material. A stake like that would be transcribed from the National Hedgeland Society, probably 20 or 30 pence each. This is a 100 metre hedge, uh, so we need 200 stakes. We the bottom, the same with the binder. 200 stakes, 200 pounds. And that'd be about 20 pence. So that's, that's the cost. If you've got your own supply nearby, then that's the way to, to get your material. So lovely straight um, stakes we've got. From about the stake, ideally, would be between, I think, one and a half, I think, two centimetres. One and a half centimetres to about two and a half centimetres, so up to about an inch maximum. Until so, there, little axe. Is that your own axe, Louise? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think John's using a billup. Yeah. yeah. And John using yeah. a single bladed billup, which we tend to say are Southern Counties billups or Newton billups sometimes as well. What we're doing here, we're partially cutting through, so the principle is to partially cut through the stem. We don't want to cut it all the way through. If we do cut it all the way through, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't matter too much because we can still lay it in. And what we're trying to encourage is regrowth from the base of the stem. So this would make, this is the principle, the thing that makes the, the hedge stop proof when we get the regrowth coming through. And you want a nice long pleat. So when I come to do the demonstration for you, I'll show you how to do it. We look further along the hedge, we can see a section that's been cut through. Alf, I think you ought to give Ron Smart a mention. Ron Smart as well, yes. He, he taught me, actually, Ron Smart. Exactly. Frank Malin. He's taught a lot of people, he's and he's guys. still around. Ron's still around, they're both still around.
Come this way. on the thickness of the stem. Okay. Okay. So what you're looking for is a nice run that will come, I think in this case, it just happens you've got that uh, branching there, and that will come down. It'll just be a nice straight run at the right point for which the uh, stem will drop. You're not forcing your toes. Right? These are 18 inches roughly, these should be 12 foot, uh, and then I suppose a 12 foot will do, um, yeah. 